praise be to God. We thank God for another day and another opportunity. He allowed us to preach the gospel. Good news concerning Christ and his church. Give it over there and hear what God says to the Lord this morning. But let us first have a little talk with Jesus. Oh, precious God, our Savior, our Lord, our Redeemer, be caused for a little while to give you glory, give thanks and to your holy and righteous name for all that you do. We thank you. Bless us with your spirit this morning as we go forth. Lead us and guide us, Lord, through your word that you anointed, the anointing rests upon me that I might preach the good news concerning Christ and his church. We praise you right now, magnify in your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. There is a word from heaven this morning. Taken from the 40th Psalms, the 40th Psalms, beginning with the first verse, we find these words, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of the muddy clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my loins. And he had put a new song in my mouth, even praises unto God. Many shall say it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Let us talk a little while this morning on the subject, waiting patiently for your blessings. Amen. Waiting patiently for your blessings. When you expecting something from the Lord, a blessing from the Lord, the first thing we must do is have patience, exercise patience in our lives. Uh, the hardest thing it seems like to do, especially with our young ones, is to exercise patience in waiting on anything. But we as saints of God, if you want to be blessed and you want to receive the blessings of God, God may not come on your time. But if you just wait, and while you wait, be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. In these passages of scripture, here, David, he experienced, he experienced the, the patience and waiting on God. And when we pray, we must wait with that expectation. Uh, when we wait, wait with expectation, expecting your blessing. When I pray, I start, I begin to look. As soon as I get off my knees, I begin to start looking for my blessing. Because I know that I talk to the Lord. And while waiting on your blessing, you got to exercise faith in God that you will receive your blessing. My Bible can tell me that God will provide. And another thing about God, God will not lie. If God promises you something that in, your, in his word and what have you, you can bet your dollar, God will bless you with it. But you got to be patient and have the faith in waiting on the Lord. Uh, some have left the faith. Some have left God only because they didn't exercise patience in waiting for God's help. If God give God, put God on a time schedule. And I'm praying to God now for my blessing. And if you don't get here by tomorrow, then I'm going to try it my way. 
And that's, that's what happens with a lot of us sometimes. We don't wait patience on the Lord, then we go and, 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 and do it our way. And when we do it our way, that's when we mess up and fall in, in a, in a deeper hole for ourselves. Praise the Lord. Wait patience. What are you waiting for this morning? Is it something that you have been talking to God for and you have been waiting for some time? Huh? So what I do, preacher, well, you keep on waiting. He who, he, he who waited for the Lord, my Bible tells me, shall renew their strength. Read up and renew their strength. Wait with great, with great expectations that God will have bless you. Some have left to see. Don't have exercise waiting for God's help. Huh? Waiting for God to help us is not easy. But David received four benefits for waiting on the Lord. See, when you wait, you, if there's some benefits in waiting on the Lord, David, David experienced this. This is the reason why David can tell the writer and tell the world uh, what to expect when you have patience and wait on the Lord. The first benefit was that God lifted him out of his despair. In other words, God gave him hope. And sometimes when God don't show up on our time, huh, look like the roof is caving in, we lose hope in God. Our hope is gone. But David said God gave him, God gave him hope. Huh? He, he lifted him up out of despair. In other words, God gave him hope. Sometimes in life, my brothers and sisters, things can become perplexed. Not understanding why this or that is happening to us. What will she, what shall we do? Keep on waiting. Keep on waiting on the Lord. Sometimes you can like, get into certain situations, we don't know how to handle it, and we don't know how to do it, deal with it. Job, the man of patience, he didn't know why he was suffering. He didn't know what he was going through and why he was suffering, because he was a righteous man. But I stay, I stopped to remind you this morning that, that Christians, that, and we who are the righteousness of God, we go through certain checks and trials and tribulations ourselves. And, 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 and what we got to do is exercise that patience until God shows up. Paul, Apostle Paul, suffered a, sick, a sickness. And a sickness, he didn't know what was going on. But yet still, Paul was patient and waited on the Lord. Those who have taken their lives, those who have taken their lives because they had lost hope. Huh? But David is telling us this morning, you keep hope alive. Whatever it is that you hope for, whatever it is that you desire of God, keep hope alive. There are those who are, are, are going uh, uh, every day. There are those who are giving, giving up every day. Uh, see, when we uh, ask God for help, uh, first of all, we got to pray after the one. We must wait patiently on him and don't give up. God will lift you up out of despair. Hallelujah. And a lot of folk are going through uh, the despairs and have lost hope this morning. Just as he did for David, God will do it for you. Secondly, by waiting on God, God set his feet on the a firm, on a firm ground. God had delivered David many times uh, from out of the pit in the murder of clay. Uh, and, and in the murder of clay of life, some of us are there right now at the door. At the door. But all you got to do is just have that faith. Keep the faith. Keep trusting God. Trust the God that God will lift you up out of the murder of clay of life. Whatever it is that you're going through. And there's so many trials and tribulations that we are up against on, on, on this day. But yet still, you keep the faith. Paul reminds the Corinthian church uh, uh, 
First Corinthians 4 and 8 of the same thing. He said, though we may be at the end of our rope, we are never at the end of our hope. There's always, my brothers and sisters, hope in God. When you, when you lose your hope in God, you're finished. Don't lose your hope in God. Keep hope alive. Keep on looking. Keep on searching. Keep on waiting for your blessing. And after a while, by and by, God will. He said, I'm your refuge, I'm your refuge and I'm your strength, a present help in time of need and in time of trouble. God will. He will bless you. He's still in the blessing business. Hold your head up high. One, one, one something said, hold your head up high when you walk through the storms of life. Don't be afraid of the storm. Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart, knowing that you are not alone. Uh, be patient and waiting for uh, your blessing. We are never at the end of hope. When trials and tribulation come, keep the faith. Second, second Corinthians 4 and 8 tells us that we are trouble on every side. Every time you look around, troubles on the left, troubles on the right, troubles before us, trouble is behind us. We are trouble uh, on every side, yet not distressed. We are pre-pledged, but not in despair. A lot of things happen in life that we just don't understand with the why, the when, and what's the reason for it, but you just keep hope alive in God. And then after a while, by and by, you will be able to reflect back and look at look back, look back on your life, and you can see the reason and the why and everything else. Once God step through, step through. At a certain time in life, you should be able to reflect, reflect back on your life, and, and, and you will realize that God always has been on your side, and He always will. Jesus be able to promise us that. He said, Lord, I'll be with you always, even until the end of time. Huh? Even until the end of time, I will be there with you. Amen. Praise you, the Lord. And we face great trouble, and the trials and trouble in life. And it's easy to focus on the pain and the circumstances, rather than focus on what God say about our problem. It's easy. And the circumstances. David, not David, but Peter. Peter, he uh, seen Jesus walking up on the water, and he asked Jesus, can I come? Can I come? Can I, can I come to you? Jesus said, come, Peter. He beat for Peter to come. Peter had the faith, but that's as the, but when the tides rise, and the tides got high, huh? Peter began to take his eyes off Jesus, and he looked at the tides and the waves. Uh -huh. And then you went down in the water. That's how we do sometimes. Take your eyes off the circumstances and take your eyes after you talk to God. After you talk to God and wait on the Lord, or waiting on the Lord, talk to God, take your eyes off the circumstances and what you've gone through and wait and wait patiently on God. And I guarantee you, God will, He will see you through. And He will deliver. That's the God that we serve. David learned. That there is some benefits to receive when we wait upon the Lord. Just like your job gives you benefits, sick leave, vacation, huh, time off, huh, the benefits, sick benefits, huh, God give us spiritual benefits as well. And uh, David said, He brought me up also out of the horrible pit. Out of the murray clay. David wants us to know this, what God can do. There is no, nothing that, that is too hard for God. And if he brought David out of the horrible pit and the murray clay of life, when I'm talking about the murray clay of life and what have you, I'm talking about the troubles and the trials and the tribulations that what we experience in life as we go. David experienced, now he wants you to know that God will. Lift you out of the mountain clay. And they set my feet. He said, set my feet upon a rock and establish my going. You can begin to go. You can begin to keep moving. You can begin to continue to work. You can begin to continue on in life with your head up. Look it up. You continue to serve God. And 
don't give up. Many have given up. Many have given up. Can't even quote uh, this. Uh, the trials and the tribulations of a life. Yeah, Isaiah, the scripture tells us, Isaiah 40, 31. But they that wait is on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's mean give up. They never, they never give up when you wait on the Lord. That's the great benefit to be patient and wait on, wait on the Lord. Sometimes God don't show up right away with our blessings or something uh, uh, um, because he is some, trying to teach us something. Maybe he's trying to teach you how to be patient. Maybe, we, maybe I don't have enough patience. So if you don't have enough patience, you know who's going to teach you? God is going to be the one that teach, teaches us. And then he won't give us what we desire right away. He said, but I'm going to teach that man there's some patience. I'm going to teach him how to wait on his blessing, how to wait on the Lord. Have you a witness? And God will. Everything don't come instant. This is the, I know it's a microwave oven world that we are living in, but with God, he don't, he don't, he don't do like how earthly parents do. Cry, I'm coming. a child can't get what he wants in, in life and whatever, he begins to throw a tangent. He began to roll on the floor. He began to cry and beat the floor. But I don't care how much we beat the floor and what have you. Our job is to have faith and be patient and wait on God for our blessing. And God will. He will bless. And God doesn't show up on our time. We go and try to resolve the problem ourselves. Or we go to our neighbor. What do you think about this neighbor? Uh, I don't care who you go to. If God's not ready for you to have it, you're not going to receive it. I've seen many times uh, I have been asking God for certain things in life and God, he didn't bless me with it, bless me with it right away. And as I got older, I see why he didn't bless me with it. When he finally decided that he would bless me with it, uh, Brother Billy, I couldn't deal with it. And he knew at that time. See, God knows certain things you want or think you need in life. Huh? God knows that you are not ready for it. And when the time is right, when time is right, God will bless you. He will give you the desires of your heart. Praise the Lord. We thank God. Wait patiently on your blessing this morning. Just keep on waiting. Some are some losing hope. Some giving up. Huh? Some giving up in the faith. But don't give up in the faith. God is going to stop in. He's going to step in. And he's going to bless you. We read on Jesus, it was prophesied over 2,000 years that the Messiah would come. The Messiah will come. Some kept the faith. Some died in the faith. Never seen the Messiah. Huh? Some died in the faith, believing that Jesus will come. Now we experience it. We experience it. The church. We see it. But many of our brothers and sisters of old never seen it. And what happened? We thank God. Trust in the Lord. But all your heart and need not be your own understanding. And God will see you through. Hallelujah. Thank God. Praise you, the Lord. God is good. Amen. There might be someone this morning would like to call. Brother Preacher, uh, what must I do to be saved? That if thou shall confess with thy mouth, believe within thy heart that God hath raised Jesus from the dead for your sin, thou shall be saved. Salvation is free. Salvation is here today. Wherever you are, believe on the Lord. Believe that God has raised Jesus from the dead for your sins. That's all you got to do. You out there. All you got to do is trust that Jesus is the Son of God. Believe with the heart. Confess with the mouth that Jesus died. Sacrifice his life for you and I. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Go to your nearest church. Oh, I love that. Nearest church and, and trust and give your life to Christ.
Christ. People are leaving here every day. People are leaving here. If I sit down and my soul get low, it's nobody's fault for mine, but mine. You have heard the gospel. You have heard the word. They are coming by here and hearing by the word of God. Do you hear me this morning? We are pleading and preaching God. Uh, uh, pre pre preaching and pleading all over the world. All over the world. The job of the church and the mission of the church is to say your souls. Say your souls. Say your souls for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I come. Hallelujah. God to him that is able to keep us from falling on the wise God to save them in love, sweet communion of his Holy Spirit. Rest rules and abide if you are unfold and forevermore. Let the redeemed of the Lord 